Hey guys, Matt here at Finnebury Woods this morning with Stephen Reed and Rob from Falcon Outdoors. And we're going to talk a little bit about bushcraft and what that sort of like is to us and spending time in nature as general. So guys, um, basically I was sort of like putting out on the channel recently around um, sitting and sort of like talking about different things and running over sort of like you know how I would go about sort of like setting up things and what kit I use and everything so I put it out there to sort of like the audience of what they would like and uh, one of the things was sort of like the esoteric nature of bushcraft yeah. and sort of like what it means to me and you know I'm putting out to sort of you guys as well sort of like yeah so deep yeah i know that's what i thought i thought uh, we're, I we're going deep here <laughs> bit, bit early in the morning for that but no we're doing all right we're doing all right i've had, I've had a toasty <laughs> <laughs> nine in the morning yeah um, let's go first that's uh, well for me it's like um you know to, to try and keep it short because you could you could make uh, it yeah, very long couldn't you? yeah yeah um, and okay. it's 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 sort of a, a a mix of growing up that way yeah and um you know uh, uh, a lifestyle really yeah. um i'm just fortunate enough that it's my job absolutely know? yeah um so then the, you've got no choice yeah i've got no <laughs> choice oh, yeah, it's, it's, it's it's just a job no no i'm only joking no, no. so um yeah i mean that's that's the, the the long and short of it but it it also you know brings me to a lot of places as well you know traveling traveling as well I suppose, yeah, that's, uh, you being an instructor as well and being able to sort of like, you know, go on your tours and things. Yeah, yeah. Think, yeah. Um, um, you know, obviously it's uh, it's been a bit slow with the travelling yeah. you know, recently, but... <laughs> yeah. uh, <laughs> You're travelling from here to over, just over there and back again. <laughs> Five kilometre radius. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, sort of like, it must be fantastic sort of like being able to be out here like every day and... Yeah. Yeah, yeah no, it's been like because of, you know, Lockdowns and whatnot, but I suppose everything's been a bit busier. Yeah. Um, do you get used to it? Do you get? Do you like turn up here, and you're like, oh, in the forest again? Or are you like you always kind granted. of? A, yeah. It's do quite. You always appreciate it. Yeah, I, I, I think wondered. I do. Yeah, I'd say I, I, I always do, and I'm, I'll, I'll be out here quite long stints. Yeah. I'm sort of living. It's not like, you know, living like in the Canadian wilderness or something like no. that. That you're like hours away from anything. Less bears. Yeah, <laughs> but um, you know, you're sort of, you're like, you're just nipping away from that, but you Rat are, race. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I suppose that's where it comes in for me, um, personally, sort of like, you know, if I think about it, it's as much as, you know, about sort of like practicing the home and those sort of like primitive skills and all the rest of it, it's about that, you know, being out in nature and just being away from everyday life yeah i suppose for me sort of like it's just taking that time out and obviously i enjoy the filming side of it as well but from point of view of like the escape actual time yeah escape from work and sort of like you know other yeah. people yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. i think i've got like multiple strands to yeah, it yeah absolutely yeah because on one hand there is the just generally getting away mm. from everything getting out, out, outdoors but also it combines a lot of things that i kind of like like fire and knives, yeah, our sharp things, toys, and and camping, <laughs> and the outdoors in general, and then the opportunity for me for when making videos to film stuff that looks really really nice, yeah, really well made. Like there's a lot of you know visually things that make a really nice shot, yeah, like a campsite at night looks yeah. incredible. Um, so there's lots of lots of strands to it. I would I would say I dabble more than. Yeah. More than anything else. Um, I'm not very good at <laughs> anything in particular. Yeah, but I would say, you know, from what we've seen your channel and what you sort of like get up to, although, yeah, like you dabble in like the bushcraft side of things, you're out in nature a lot and you're out in sort of like, you know, yeah. outside a lot yeah, yeah, and sort yeah. of like, you know, it's very much about the outdoors and, yeah. you know, appreciating nature as it a whole as well, in. don't you? It all yeah. Ties yeah. In. yeah, I can I can use editing skills to make it look like I'm really good at bushcraft side of things, but I need to. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> Still, have, you just still haven't done this bow drill. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get you one day. We'll uh, get you on it one day. Uh, um, to be fair, I still haven't put it back into practice yet. I, that, that's that's a summer activity when everything's nice and dry. <laughs> no, um, yeah, it's funny. I, I tell you another thing. What I've found is um, 
I suppose it's massive now, isn't it? Like mm. sort of mental health. Yeah, and for me, sort of like I suppose in this previous years, I went through a period of sort of like poor mental health due to my sort of day job and other things going on, and actually escaping and starting this YouTube channel and sort of like you know really escaping yeah. out into the woods has helped me to no end. You know. Yeah, like when we went into the first lockdown last March. If you go back in the channel. You'll see the first video, probably one of the only videos I've been actually referenced the pandemic. Yeah. Was I? I just got like really miserable. Yeah. I felt almost depressed because I suddenly realised I can't go anywhere. I can't go into the mountains. I can't you know do this that. But I had a forest that was just with that was near enough. Yeah. Up, nearby. And I remember that. Yeah. I just went for a walk. If I if I if I didn't know what to do or where to go, and I couldn't decide. I'd probably just go to a forest. I think that's where I we've sort of like own, reached out a bit at through. that stage, wasn't it? I think you reached out to me at that stage, sort of yeah. like around, sort of like, you know, going to the camp and things like that, because you at the time started to sort of mess about and build some different bits and pieces, didn't you, in the woods? And, yeah. Well, I've built a few that. things over the years, none of them very good. Yeah, yeah. Um, and now, thanks to the forestry service, they're all gone. Mm -hmm. But I, I, don't have the, I don't have your kind of patience to do something like this. I would, I, I quite like making things. I had a shack that I spent. I spent four months making, yeah, yeah. but I the maximum amount of time I spent there was an hour. Mm. I would get on my lunch, drive to the forest as fast as I could, get to the site, work on it for an hour, yeah, yeah. and I did that for six months. So I didn't really get time to properly relax yeah. into it, which is why I've stopped. I just don't build anything now no. because I'd rather go to the forest and just go for a walk, whittle a stick, yeah, or. But that that's the same for me sort of like recently sort of like because my day job and everything else I'm finding it yeah. increasingly hard to spend like vast amounts of time which is why like my building videos are sort of like slowed down and i'm spending more time just going out you know with a tarp shelter or whatever sort of mm. like you know end up doing or nothing at all you know making a fire cooking something to eat and just relaxing and enjoying nature sort oh, of yeah. like you know definitely part of definitely a part of it because that but that's um yeah I, I have like elements of that and then i'll like stuff that that's being built that they might take a bit longer yeah um i don't i don't <laughs> Yeah. I don't actually um, sometimes even keep on with it. I'll, I'll nip in and out of it. Yeah. So like I'll be like, yeah, I'll, you know, sort of happy enough with that. Now I'll probably move on to some other little project. But then if the other one's not finished, I'll bounce back. So you sort of bounce in between these projects. So you almost want it when you're a bit bored or yeah, or that's you're the bit... same. Like even with my A-frame, sort of like made my main A-frame shelter. I got all that done with the moss and the bed mm. and everything else, and then it was a bit like. Uh, no, I'm going to go off and do something else now because I'm sort of like tired of that a little bit now. But now I've sort of like got my head. I, I want to sort of like continue it and sort of like expand on it and do a few different things. Like, yeah, I think people can put too much pressure on themselves as well yeah. to actually do stuff. Yeah. So it's like you know people might, you know that that they've got sort of skill sets they want to do. They might put high pressure on themselves to sort of achieve that. You know as yeah. well. You know, and that's that's the pressure rather than you know you might want to just go out and. And just literally just sit around sit. and do nothing in the woods. Yeah, that is quite nice. You're doing like an overnight camp. Yeah. Generally, go out and do some stuff during yeah. the day, yeah. and then just sit around the fire. Yeah, yeah. But putting the world to rights until the early hours. So like in the mornings when when I'm on a walk, you know, when I'm sort of hiking in the mornings or something, then that's more that's more on, in my downtime. But the sort of hike is brings me somewhere, you know, after five hours. Yeah. But I'm not, not you know, I'm just pitching pitching up setting up the camp rather than you know here i'll be coming i'll be like i've got a bit of a, a sort of a, a sort of set of things that you want to achieve that i'm always doing mm. and like no i mean it's it's quite structured you mm. know and it's quite sort of you know i can get a sort of a relaxing side to it here yeah. but it, here it's it's, it's your it's office yes yeah, this is more structured as well that's but again it can be i can use it in both both, both fields, you know, like yeah. to But that's the other thing, sort of like, you know, it's such a broad subject, sort of like bushcraft yeah. as well. Like you say, you know, even the hiking and sort of like, you know, going out and, yeah. you know, just taking that skill with you and sort of like, you know. And there's a lot of responsibility too, because like, yeah. um, you know, so there's, well, my side, I mean, obviously I, I think there's there's instructors that probably, you know, the, the, they teach the, the skill sets there, but then I've got the expeditionary side of yeah. things. So like I'm sort of responsible for people's Taking lives in like you, you know yeah. like in in the Himalayas or mm. when we've been to Chile last year, um, and you know so taking people like high altitude and, and sort of these wilderness places, 
Um, yeah, the you know, responsibility of that there's, is there's massive. There's massive responsibility, and like, and I, and I think that's a massive difference. It's like you know, you as a trained instructor and sort of like you know, expedition leader and everything. You know, in comparison to me, who's just sort of like personally, you know, I do it for myself. Yeah. I don't, I don't, I don't come on the channel and say I know I'm an expert. I know how to do anything. Sort of like you know, if I'm showing you things, I'm showing you how I would do it, and that's not from a point of view of expertise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah. know, and that side of things, but like. You know, whereas Rob being sort of like, you know, trained and sort of like, you know, an instructor, it's a totally different level of responsibility, like you say. Sort of it's like, probably you know. also different. You've got to get used to being in front of massive groups. Yeah. You know, like, I mean, I've had, I mean, I was like, I sometimes just have a, a couple or something, but yeah. then other times I've got 20 people. Yeah. You know, so it's like. And then um, you're keeping an eye on like 20 people. It's, yeah. a, it's a total different experience. Yeah. You know, I know that from my workplace, sort yeah. of like, you know, leading a team and things. It's, it's very much sort of like, yeah. Oh, he's in the back of your head job. But it's the same for, for regardless if someone's in a, a you know a, a qualified or trade instructor. Mm. But I don't know why I've done that there. But because yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, myself, like I'm sort of I'm a mix. So like obviously part of it is upbringing. Yeah. There's a little bit of there's you know there was uh, courses done. You know obviously there was like sort of like the. the a bit in the military you know uh, and then a lot of self-teaching so it's kind of like you put all those yeah. in the cauldron and then you get a, a sort a nice of decent yeah. like a sort of good mix rather than just have it say one-sided yeah you know so i mean i but, think that's where i sort of carry my skills from yeah. as a trained carpenter so yeah. like so that's where i'm sort of taking my woodworking skills yeah. into sort of yeah. like crafting and you know carving and different things like that rather than you know Oh, Whereas no. my art teacher told me never to do art, so <laughs> that's why everything I make looks awful. <laughs> but I would teach exactly the way you you the way you do it. I was like I would always emphasise that it's um, this is the way that I sort of learn it or the way I it works for me, and then you know whatever skill that may be. But what works for someone else yeah. is is you know so it's always everyone. And, and it's, I suppose that's like life. You always have to find your own path. You find, yeah, exactly. You can learn one way, but then you yeah. hone it to your own sort of like what fits you best. Yeah, you know, and sort of like me and the way that you like to do things. Yeah, it's like um, what yeah. do you call it? You don't you don't practice to be perfect. You practice to be sort of more permanent. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So my the thing that always I think about a lot is that is how how can you get bushcraft to reach an audience. Which doesn't think they're interested in it, yeah. Mm. But really, they are. So what I've noticed is that mm. the sort of hiking and outdoor people who are interested in hiking and walks and stuff, you kind of assume it's all general outdoors. They should be yeah. interested in this yeah. stuff as well, because there's a lot of uh, connection. But often they're not, because in their head, bushcraft is eating bugs and and, and things like and things yeah. like that. Uh, there's a there's a massive misconception yeah. on bushcraft, and a lot of like even you know they see. Like the likes of us going out into the forest or whatever, and they think, oh, what are they doing? You know, they're trashing the forest, they're sort of like things, mm, but actually, yeah. a responsible bushcrafter is going out and, uh, you know, looking after nature as much as yeah, anything yeah. else, you know. But, like, the, the misconception, and I guess that's the same from that point of view. Yeah, what do you think? Guess, what's the easiest entry point? Hiking, then getting to a point, camping, because the if they camping. go in, no, but if they go in thinking it's yeah. a time in the mornings and you hiking and sort of going there, and then you're getting to that location, camping, doing a little bit of bushcraft skills around sort of like lighting the fire and everything else, then you're maybe explaining that, you yeah. know, they're doing... It's got to be maybe, knives. Yeah. Knives. <laughs> it's it's got to be knives, because like, at the end of the <laughs> day, like, the, 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 you know, regardless of um, mm. anyone that's going outdoors, most of the time, should, I know it sounds should carry. fun, yeah, yeah, you know, we talk about like, even, even rock climbers have their own type of knives, mm. do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. if you... You can get a petzel, you know, like you know, uh, a, a, a technical climber's knife. You yeah. know, it, it, they're out there. So That's true. essentially, for every craft, there's a knife. So if you're hiking in the morns, just and you're just a, a, a walker or a trekker, yeah. even if if you take that any to any sort of seriousness, you should, you should have a knife with you, yeah. right? So if you got a knife with you, and if you're a trekker as well, you're going to camp. Yeah. So and then that's where it sort of it. It, it ties in, yeah, it has to tie yeah. in, you know. The only difference is for a lot of guys, you know, that you, you sort of see these, these hikers and stuff, um, they, 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 might, they might crash on top of the mountains, yeah. you know, sleep yeah. up there rather than we would rather woods, sleep in the, in the woods. Yeah. But essentially, if you was gonna teach a, a, a proper place, where would be the better place to camp? 
it would be down lower where it's not the most exposed yeah. windy place ever yeah. where you can't you know you so, can't add it from two different two different yeah. directions though because i know mm. like i'm going out with a group at some point in the next month to do one of those yeah. camps in a pig i've never done it before yeah but if you the motivation for doing that is is less about the best place to camp and more about where you're going to get the best view exactly <laughs> the no best but that's view, the best that's view, views in the morning yeah but it's not necessarily the best location to sit around and even a talk because it gets yeah. very cold very quickly yeah. yeah up there it's it's, it's two different it's two, diff it's the, two different i think from the bushcraft as well is a certain element of i guess there's a survival training sort of like element to it and it, like you say from your element is like that wouldn't necessarily be the best choice you wouldn't out of a out of a safety out of a sort of comfort perspective you wouldn't necessarily choose the mountain top you're going to choose a sheltered location yeah. where you can get some kind of you know shelter from the no, elements yeah yeah, yeah. but yeah. again it's also like again if you wanted to sort of break it down where like there, there's always you know very kit orientated folk oh yeah and That's then nice. bushcraft to me isn't very <laughs> <Damn it>. <laughs> <laughs> Bushcraft to me isn't that kit orientated because no. it's it's very so like Skill. I've I've you know like I've made a lot of my own kit and yeah. um, you know modify a lot of kit as well. Whereas yeah. sort of you know your your sort of hikers and that um, you know they they're sort of you know it's like I say like yeah. they, they they like you know got their little scales at home trying to get the grounds down and stuff like yeah. that rather than you know. The weight that they carry. But then whereas, that's yeah. where you want to tie it over. You, that's where you want to bring them in because, you know, they do they do have the kit to yeah. use. Well, to I'm right. David Doyle. <laughs> we are, you know, have you met David? No. I'm <laughs> David Doyle is so particular. He, he, this guy I know wild camps a lot. He's so particular. He weighs everything. And if you buy a piece of kit, he wants to know what weight it is. Mm. But he's only ever done. Um, tent yeah. camping, right? And has no interest in tarp and so on. But I managed to. I've got him because I told him how light a tarp is compared to a tent. Yeah. And yeah. now all of a sudden he's asking me about yeah. tarps. So maybe that's how you win the ultralight guys over by t telling them how but light. And yeah. the skills that, that you carry. As in, like, you know, you don't necessarily need, need all the heavy kit because. You just build one. Yeah, build one. Yeah. 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 That's, uh, I always build one and then it gets burnt, you know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but. Um, Not necessarily while you're on it. But also, there's there's little skill sets as well that tie in for both things. That's mm, the thing yeah. where you get navigation. Yeah. Like any anyone that wants to be anything in the the mountains, the moorlands, wherever yeah. it be, they need to read a map and compass, yeah. and that ties in with bushcraft because you know here that's something I really emphasise. That's a massive thing, even on like the survival courses. Mm. Um, I'd say a lot of survival courses don't even teach navigation. Yeah, you know, they sort of, really, yeah. because it's a massive. So yeah. It's a really important skill, you know. But um, but with them, with, you know, and even sort of mountain leadership programs, yeah. they they're core focus map compass, and then they don't go deeper into like the natural navigation, you know. So yeah. So like, you know, I go into stars, moon, sun, you know, vegetation, winds, you yeah. know, clouds, and or that anything that can give yeah. you direction, yeah. you know. And that's useful yeah. for people who just want to hike as well. Yeah, predict, and that's the thing, the you know, yes. like. So even the, the the guy that's that's weighing all his kit, trying to get it down, you know, because he, that would say it to say to me, he's so articulate about his kit. Yeah. He should be articulate about skill set to be in the mountains. Yeah, yeah. So if you've got like a brand knowledge, mm. which people like that do, and they're proud of that brand knowledge, and say some of the brands that they stick with, some that they don't, yeah. and their sort of professionalism in that way, then for someone to sort of not be interested in navigation wouldn't make sense really no. you know yeah no yeah absolutely it's uh, it, it has to come part of the parcel and that's where you sort of can get some of the little crossovers i think with certain little skill sets yeah as well. yeah. I, yeah i do think that, that when you combine bushcraft with the camping it changes the experience quite a bit mm. it yeah. changes it from get to the location set up the tents and you know chat if you can yeah but you have nothing to do yeah and then you just go to sleep whereas if you've got some bushcrafty things you can do and especially if you go into a forest where you've got yeah. deadwood lying around you can yeah. sit down and you could you can sit you can make something yeah, yeah. It, mm -hmm. it, it gives it gives you stuff to do at the campsite it makes the campsite part of the experience yeah rather well, than if you, you just have yeah you see a lot of these like you know the petromax stuff and everything yeah. else and like some of the massive frames and everything else you can get for the campsites you're not mm -hmm. carrying that with you no. that's for a permanent <laughs> camp and you're, yeah. you're not sort of you know, at the end of the day you need to be able to in my mind 
you know, go around the forest and make some of these things and be yeah. able to sort of like set yourself up, you know, and yeah, then, yeah. then you can do all sorts of different cooking and everything, but you're not carrying a lot of this kit out with no. you, you can't. So, you know, like you say, you know, having those tasks to do around yeah. the fire can be good and yeah. good fun too. And it also, changes the hike because you're mm. constantly, I've no, I noticed this when I went a few hikes with you, yeah. You're constantly like reaching under rocks and grabbing dry bits of grass and stuff. Oh like. yeah, yeah. So like my wars all damaged by the time you get to the campsite, you could stroll, you know, you gather and tender the, the whole. Yeah, or like a sniper, you know. <laughs> but um, no, that's definitely yeah, that's true because you sort of yeah, the dynamics change. Or you might be looking for something, I don't know, something to forage on the yeah, way. Yeah, yeah. But then yeah, that's a mindset thing with obviously bushcraft as well. And you're looking around you, you you you're sort of like taking in the bigger picture and mm -hmm. sort of like and everything. And I'm, like funny enough, I, I recently read. Ray Mears' new book, you know, and everything else, and he's on about all the, the olfactory senses and using all your senses and different things, you know, yeah, when yeah. you're tracking getting and different back. things, getting and getting back. it back and learning it all again. Like, even like, you know, like the sense of smell that we have and things like that, you mm -hmm. know. But it's it's funny, really, sort of like, you know, it's such a massive sort of like all all sort of like you know umbrella sort of like you know. It's because those senses are, you know, they they're wild, but they've just been almost unused. not yeah it's like that no they're, they're used in a in another context yeah, so that yeah, what yeah. happens is it's like what pretty perfume it's of like thing. so so little danger sensors say they they the sensors come from say watching the road for you know if a car's yeah, coming yeah. rather than being in the woods and looking out for certain types of wildlife mm. so all you're doing is those senses you've never lost those senses no. you just kind of bring them back round mm. um and that's what i like and hone them, I suppose, like any other skill. People people come on foraging courses, and it's it's probably quite daunting for for to think about because everyone you know everyone pretty much will know that there's thousands of things out there yeah, you know yeah, yeah. just by just glance at an, a, a book, um, so they're always sort of um, you know daunted by that or like the woods or like bird calls or whatever. But yeah. actually, you've got to compare it with learning languages so if you if you um if you go live in a country for a certain amount of time you'll pick up the language yep. you'll probably get to a point where you don't even realize that you're fluent no I know, you, you yeah. um you i know that just because you know i lived in spanish-speaking countries for best part of 15 years wow. so like and probably two years of that was spent sort of frustrated yep. sort of trying to figure out what people were saying around me and then mm -hmm. and then there was another maybe year where people would ask me yeah just get Rob to translate he's fluent and I was like no, it's no, funny I'm, not. Sort of I'm like, not and then I can really um, sort of like and then the penny drops yeah. so I can I tell people right you if you come and stay out here a while with me right yeah. so the first the first thing will be just oh the birds you know noisy in the mornings you know that's how it starts and then after days, days, you'll be like, that's a black cat, that's a wren, that's yeah. a jay. That's, and then you, you can actually, you know, I can... Everything starts to look different. Every, yeah, everything. I, I noticed pieces that together. come out a few mm, times. Yeah. You look over plants and it's green, and then you're not, you're now subconsciously, at that, even if you don't necessarily know what they are, yeah. mm. you're, that's, a different, that's a plant, that's a different plant. That's, yeah. you, you suddenly think that the Your visuals change as yeah. well, so like your, your pickups for movement. So like, um, when we take people like wildlife watching, so the, the badgers, for example, yeah. I've had, in the hide, we'll get, say, five people, and obviously it gets to dusk, and I'll, I'll have to point the badger out to them, because they can't see them, so they're over there, but I, I'll pick small. it up straight yeah. away. Yeah. I pick up straight, but they are. But again, that's learning in the different lighting to use different senses, like you know your your peripherals and stuff. A lot of people don't really use their peripherals and things in low light sort of things it's, to see movement and all the rest of, of it. Isn't it. Like observation, so like yeah. a badger, you'd think because it was headed stand out, but yeah. it, like no. it You're it does. But brain. like they're yeah. um, the they're actually very well camouflaged. Yeah. Um. So you know, and obviously the folks in the hide, you know, the, these probably you know folks that love the outdoors but you know only get out yeah, yeah. a certain amount of time or you know do their jobs and then go uh, and do what they've got to do go on walks and what yeah so um you know that's where where you can see it's like you pick up the movements it's a bit like even the the little birds nest yeah. I showed you guys you know i know the like the parents 
the parents they feel like these are like my neighbors yeah you know? so they're like and i'll tell people they're the parents that's mum and dad you yeah. know that's where they live you know so and everything's kind of like i know the jays that live over there so that's like you're like for me that's how like people are at home like mm -hmm. those are the joneses yeah that's the the, the robinsons <laughs> over there but that's here i've got the jays there yeah um, there's the, 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 the blue tits there and then I know where there's like the big buzzards nests over there. So yeah. it's literally the black cap the black there's a black cap guy there's and I just call everyone guys, you know, yeah, they're yeah, not yeah. like objects to no, me. Yeah. Like, yeah. Well guys, that's us for another day. Thanks for joining me. I hope you enjoyed this episode with the guys there. Fantastic. Um, sit and chat. I'll see you again next time. Bye now.